Vikas, I was looking at the agenda from your Amsterdam uh, customer event recently and also the one which I attended in Vegas in June last year. They were very focused on enterprise AI, which is a huge market, obviously, for Cisco. Um, when do you think that focus starts to shift into things like uh, industrial digitalization and industry 4.0 and IoT and things like that? Last week, we were at our Cisco Live event in Amsterdam, where we have 10,000 customers, pr primarily IT practitioners who come to you know learn about the latest. And AI, as always, is uh, top of line, top of the headline uh, everywhere. And then we held industry summits where we brought together 200 customers from industry, manufacturing, transportation, uh, utilities, and critical infrastructure industries. And they're doing the same thing, right? Like what's top of mind for our industrial customers is really around three key items. One, they're working through workforce shortages. Second, it's all about cybersecurity. How can they secure and protect their environments? And third, as you said, is about AI the promise of AI and how that can help our customers. Customers are already starting with their AI use cases around vision, around deployment of robotics into these industrial settings. There's this trend for AI switches. You announced one last week. Juniper announced one, I think, today. Your one has the integrated security, which is very cool. Um, those are great. I, I feel there's a risk that people are actually missing out on what's really missing from the AI picture right now, which is capacity. I mean, we're going back to the need for a lot of bandwidth capacity. Potentially, I see this spurring another sort of optical networking boom uh, when all of this AI is is, is enabled. Do you, do you agree with that, Vikas? Yes, I think the, the need, the AI is going to drive need for a lot more transport, a lot more bandwidth, a lot more capability. What's happening in the data center, you know, you've heard Cisco talk about it with G2 and Kevin kind of focusing on that. But when I look at it from an industrial environment, what's happening in the factory floor, you know, to improve uh, quality, customers are using vision systems. They're deploying cameras at every step of their manufacturing process, which are now powered using power over ethernet. They're powered using gigabit ethernet connections, and they're generating so much more traffic on the factory floor. And they need to bring all of this traffic, all of this video data to their, uh, to their AI system such that then they can monitor, manage, and then make these split second decisions around quality of what's going on. So across the board, the need for AI and need for vision systems is going to continue to ratchet up the performance, the latency, the security capabilities that these networks have to provide. There's a theme emerging from our conversation, which is that uh, when it comes to AI, it's, it's not about the chips. Uh, or uh, the the technology as much as what you do with it, as the application of it. I'm not sure that the industry's got its head around that yet. In, in a general sense, particularly with the media and investors, is that they're, they're treating it almost like we treated browsers when the internet came along. Oh, the browser's really exciting. Which browser should I invest in? And browsers are completely unimportant. It was how the internet changed uh, commercial applications that really mattered historically. Do you think we're seeing the same thing with AI? Do you think that we need to stop talking so much about NVIDIA and, uh, and chatbots and things like that? Look, after working in the industrial and industrial IoT for the last 10 plus years, what I find is, is that our customers are very much use case driven, right? Like they have a business problem to solve. I need to deliver a better quality product. And the industrial domain is really, as you said, it's about the use case. It's about how technology can help our customers get a better business outcome. And, you know, um, there will always be the next technology and AI is a pretty phenomenal one at that, but we just really need to be stay grounded and connected to the use cases, the customer need, and how we can truly help them solve uh, what they need to get done. So Vikas, I, I put you in an elite group with companies like uh, Nokia and Ericsson and, and Huawei that are really going after uh, this industrial space. They have this sort of 5G incumbency, which they use to get into industry verticals. Now, Cisco is known as a 5G incumbent, obviously. So what's your entry point into different vertical industries? We are the market leader when it comes to industrial and industrial IoT. The key unique differentiator that Cisco has is many of your readers and viewers know us as the IT networking security company, right? And, and 
as in more and more as cybersecurity becomes top of mind, IT has an ever increasing influence in what's happening on the planet. So our unique position is we are helping our customers to connect and secure everything that's happening in their operational areas and connecting that to their IT systems. We are making sure that the data that originates from that robot or the PLC can make it all the way to the data center and into the cloud environment in a secure fashion on an end-to-end -end basis. It's an exciting time uh, for, for, for Cisco, for the industry and for the world. Thank you so much for talking to me today, Vikas.